Welcome to the new Roland videos from me, Nick, Mark and George here at Glenmore Lodge. In the first video, we looked at the foundations that need to be in place before we start learning to roll. In this video, we're going to go through a sequence of exercises to learn a roll from scratch. So, there's more than one way to roll and there's more than one way to teach it. Everybody's rolls look a little bit different and they'll change with different boats, different paddles, and they'll change again as you get older or pick up injuries. People love to have big arguments about what's best. To me, if it gets you back the right way up and in control of your boat, if it's safe so you haven't just wrecked your shoulders, then it does not matter whether it's a screw roll, a sweep roll, a C to C, a back deck roll or whatever. Pretty much all of those rolls I just mentioned have two main components, rotating from one side to the other whilst edging from one side to the other. They just do them in different directions and in different orders. To roll, or even to support, well, there's one other thing we need to know, and that's drown yourself to save yourself. As babies, we discover that falling over and bashing our head hurts, so we quickly learn to put our hand out and move our head away from danger. That's the opposite of what we need to do when we roll, so we need to retrain that movement. Here are a few drills that might help. So we're going to do a few little exercises working on this idea of drown yourself to save yourself. This idea that we fix, use our body to get the boat the back the right way up and the head is going to work last. So Mark, um, could you get yourself in a sort of sleepy position like this and then just bring your head down onto your hands which are going to be on the boat here. Brilliant. So now try and relax everything as much as possible with the upper body. We're going to use our salsa muscles here. First job is just to wiggle the boat around a little bit, wiggle it from side to side. Same edge exercise you were doing earlier on. Oh, that's great. Okay, this time just let the boat come as far upside down as you can let it. So you can fully capsize it and just gently bring it back. Great. Same again, only this time we're going to let it go upside down as we can and then we're going to give a bit more oomph, bringing it right back, which is going to bring us back upright. Nice one. You can see that all the work here is coming from the hips, from the legs, from the knees, from all those salsa muscles and not from the arms. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let our hands be not on the side of our head but just a little bit further out. Really concentrate on making all the work be done by your lower body, by your knees, by your hips and resist the temptation to push down with your hands. The moment anyone starts to use their arms to push down and get their head out of the water, we need to go back a stage. So we're trying to retrain Mark's perfectly sensible desire to push his head out of the water and try and keep his head down. That's going to help him with his roll. Now let's let the hands come out a little bit, but only a wee bit, and let's keep the head down and keep blowing bubbles. Let's do the same again, but we'll wind up our body. So at the start we'll be looking up towards the ceiling and right at the end We'll unwind as we come up, finishing looking down at the water. We can do that again, only this time we can fall in towards the boat and find the end. And then finally we can fall in away from the boat, passing all the way under the boat and reaching up to the other side to find the front of our rescue boat. We can repeat all those things with a few floats, so that gives us a little bit less support than the boat. Remember, we're trying to train ourselves to keep our head low and use our lower body to turn the boat the right way up. Imagine when you're using the floats that your phone or your car keys are sitting on top of the float. Keep them dry by barely pushing down on it. We can carry on as long as we like, gradually decreasing the number of floats. It's really worth spending some time here. If folks get really good at doing this, they generally learn to roll really well, really quickly. If folks skip over this stage too early, it often falls to bits once we put a paddle in their hands. If you've got a power band, you can practice this movement at home by lying on your back, reaching up and then trying to bring yourself into a nice kneeling position without putting any pressure on the power band. If you're stretching the power band, you know you're pulling too much. Uh, if folks are flexible, we might try putting a paddle in their hand at this point. Hey, 
This is where it gets more dangerous for the helper and where there's an upside down person flailing around with a sharp paddle in their hands. So to avoid any accidents, let's agree a rule that letting go of the paddle means roll me back up again. Until that happens, let's stay out of range. If you can get this working, you might be rolling. If that works for you, then maybe try again, holding onto the paddle as you capsize and see if you can work yourself into that position. Okay. That move does require a load of flexibility to get the paddle up to the surface and it potentially puts your shoulder in quite a weak position, albeit for a really short amount of time. Here's another way that doesn't. Let's crunch forwards and twist round into our setup position. That's going to have the paddle alongside the boat and if we can, let's push both ends of the paddle down so our hands are in the water. Let's try that on both sides. If we're getting that movement and sometimes it helps to feel where the boat touches you on your lower arm or your wrist, we can try it again with our eyes shut. Next, we can try capsizing and getting the paddle along the boat with a thrump blade on the surface. Just have a quick go at that and then let go of the paddle to get rolled back up again. You should find in that setter position that you can feel a bit of pressure from the boat, from the, either your wrists or your lower arms, and hopefully that'll have the paddles up in the air when we're upside down. The next step is to start sweeping the blade away from the boat. So we can try that the right way up at first. So into the start position, and just gently bringing the blade out from the boat and back in, out from the boat and back in. We can also try that keeping our head dry. We can try that the right way up with a rescuer coming alongside. And again, trying to get into the start position and then just practicing sweeping the blade out from the boat. Then we can try the same thing upside down. We can try that first with a little bit of guidance. And when I'm guiding the paddle, I'm really keen to be gently just touching the hands with a little bit of gentle finger pressure from above. If I start guiding the paddle and really scooping it and supporting it, I'm training people that they're gonna get way more support from the paddle than they're actually gonna get in real life. So we can sweep the blade out away from the boat and bring it back in, reaching up and keeping that blade on the surface. We can now revisit that sculling exercise that we did way back in the first video when we're the right way up and we're just practicing edging flattening the boat off as we bring the paddle back, bringing the boat onto an edge as we bring it forwards. Finally, we can try and put it all together. At first, it'd be okay to just gently guide the hands out, to train that movement, to sweep the paddle out from the boat, but hey, eventually, we need to step back and let them roll. Right, if we got one, let's do a few more and get that really dialed in. Nice. Really hope you enjoyed our second rolling video. In the next one, we're gonna look at troubleshooting some common problems. And how to coach a roll. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>